Hi everyone, I'm, I've promised a video that will uh, talk about all the handmade uh, uh, sprays, uh, stamps, stencils and I'll, I'll do a reference video for all those who stumble uh, to my channel and so I will have it all in one place. So let's start with the handmade sprays. I have two kinds that I make. I've got all these are gel food coloring. These are local brands, so I can't do a, a, can't a, tell you what to buy. A, I use this and I just put a few drops of the gel food coloring in those spray bottles and water and then I have my sprays which then I la label and if I can I put a piece of uh, paper uh, that will indicate the color uh, that I've made. So these are the food coloring sprays. Now there is no uh, measurements, it depends on the uh, size of your bottle and just put enough uh, that it will be uh, enough for you. Test it. If it's not, uh, add more drops. The other kind of uh, sprays that I make are from uh, this kind of textile dye uh, powder. I, since we don't have bushels here, uh, I uh, bought this and just experimented and it works fine. I just take a tip uh, of like a, a palette knife, take a little bit of powder, put it again inside the spray bottle with water and I've got a, a, a spray, handmade spray. And it, they work uh, great and I've already made videos and I've used them. Also th this powder, I just uh, use it as pigment and I use it with the uh, white glue to make uh, colorful glazes. There is a video about it. I've used them with gesso and they are very intense and they uh, create a very nice effect. So this is uh, the quick way to make uh, homemade sprays. and. Just know they are transparent and if you want something more then this is not the way. <laughs> so this is it, that's my handmade sprays. Now moving on to making stencils. So first when uh, I didn't have stencils and I wanted to make some and I didn't find acetate at the shops, especially not the cheap uh, stores that I work, uh, go to. So I was looking for something to work with and I found dividers, plastic dividers and they are quite um, flexible and they are durable and I thought it would be easy uh, to work with and I've made stencil from them. I will uh, show you just for example one of those uh, stencils I made. Let's see, I didn't get, I didn't take out one of them in advance, so now I have to, let's see, here we go. Here is one of the stencils I've made, it's, I don't know if you can notice, but I've also used it uh, on my jelly plate, so you can see the uh, markings. So this this is um, what uh, I've made at first uh, for stencils. Now the easier way to make stencils is just uh, plan your, what you want to do. Like take some kind of uh, paper and make some design. Put it under the the divider the plastic divider then go over it with a permanent marker like so and then cut it out now uh, cutting it out 
Uh, it's easier, especially for closed uh, shapes, to take an uh, exacto knife, make an, uh, like an X in the middle, like so, and then grab a nail uh, scissors and go inside and just cut the shape out. Now, nail scissors are great for this uh, kind of stuff, uh, for fussy cutting shapes and to use the curve of the scissors to your advantage. So basically, this is it now. It doesn't have to be a uh, round. You can uh, do whatever shapes you want. If you don't know how to design or how to make uh, something uh, interesting, it, there are plenty of stuff. Uh, patterns uh, on Pinterest, on basically on the internet, just uh, I'll advise to uh, try and do a search for uh, free printables. Then again, you just print whatever you want, you place it under your uh, plastic and trace it. So this is uh, using dividers. Then when I did find acetate, I've switched to the, to acetate. Now acetate is completely transparent and it's more uh, more durable and more uh, firm. So it's very uh, nice material to make a um, stencil. The only problem I found with this stuff is because it's clear I don't see what I'm doing, but I found a, a solution to this. Like if I, if this is my uh, design, I put it underneath. Of of course, I will trace with a permanent marker, sh cut the shapes, and when it's done, I will take a, one of my sprays. And I'm talking like graffiti sprays, like this, and from afar I will spray it. I don't want it completely uh, white or or blue or whatever. I just want some mist on top of it, like um, like milky uh, glass <laughs> for windows, uh, if I'm explaining myself. <laughs> So then it's not transparent anymore and you can work with it. Let's see if I have an example for this kind of a stencil I made and sprayed. So I can see what I'm doing. Here we go. This was a transparent acetate and I sprayed it from afar and now I can see what I'm doing. It looks like a stencil uh, that I uh, bought in a shop. Of course, this is not machine made. This is uh, something I made. Now, uh, several uh, people mentioned how uh, exact it is, uh, but it's not. And don't try even to uh, do exact uh, things. It's just not worth it. It's uh, studying frustration and I think the more it's not accurate, it, the more it is you and what you designed. And it's more interesting and more interesting to the eye than something that was machine made. And I, even this, the only thing I've done to make this stencil is taking some uh, plates to draw the circles. So I will have some kind of guidelines something like that and then i started cutting the shapes and as you can see they are not consistent but using this stencil uh, proved to be very nice at least in my opinion so i think all this quirkiness and all the things that are not symmetrical are better but that's up to you you can take a a design for a mosaic from the internet, print it out, trace it, and do something that is completely symmetrical. 
So uh, that's the way I'm doing stencils. Moving it aside and moving on to handmade stamps. So handmade stamps are basically I'm using a fun foam or craft foam, whatever you call it. Now the uh, most easy way is to buy uh, from uh, where uh, there is kids craft uh, shapes that are already cut and from this uh, make your uh, construct your stamp now uh, most of the time I will and these are shapes that mostly not all the time will come with adhesive in the back so it's easier now uh, most of the time I will take these shapes and mount them on foam uh, foam core board because it's easier and then I have something to hold on to I can take like this stamps the triangles and I can make myself some kind of stamp like this and as you can see adhesive in the back now sometimes the adhesive is not great then I will reinforce it with my silicone glue now silicone glue I've got a local brand from the cheap store if you are looking for silicone glue the best that I can recommend because that's the only one I know is the Yuhu brand so this is it now here we go I've got a stamp if you want to really be a uh, uh, make it easier for you uh, stamps uh, this kind of stamps are uh, better when you don't have a lot of space between the shapes it's just easier uh, uh, <laughs> uh, when, when you uh, if you are planning to only use them on an ink pen then it doesn't matter but if you also want to uh, use them with acrylics then it's better that you don't have large uh, spaces in between the shapes that you put on as you can see nothing is plain I was just making another stamp uh, for my collection here we go now uh, best uh, another tip about it it's better to do a uh, this is a thin it's like a like one millimeter I think it's better to do double then it's easier to stamp but you don't have to just work a uh, more <laughs> uh, be, uh, gentle with it if you only do one uh, layer of the fun foam so uh, now another uh, thing about this kind of uh, stamp it's better to trim it so you don't have all this uh, space because when you put it on a ink pad sometimes you push too hard this uh, takes also ink and then when you uh, come to stamp it you are stamping also this so if I'm doing a stamp like that I will trim as much as I can around my shape so I won't have leftover that will get in the way of my print like this now there are several ways to make handles uh, to this kind of stamp you can leave it be if it's uh, if it's all right with you you can only you can leave it like this or you can uh, put on a handle to so it will be easier to hold the easiest and cheapest way is just to take some duct tape and take a strip small piece fold it like this and here we go you've got a handle that you can uh, hold and it won't take uh, any 
any space because it can be flattened uh, I don't do this um, uh, most of the time I will leave my stamps like this because uh, I'm I wanted them organized uh, some way instead of just laying around in some basket so I made this folder and all my handmade stamps are attached to this uh, kind of uh, pages with a velcro little piece of velcro so i don't have a handle in the back so this is how i uh, store them like all the circles in one place and well, something uh, like circle so um, no handle here the other uh, way to make a handle especially if you want to make it for kids is to take some I uh, don't know if I have it here the uh, soldier pieces from kids uh, uh, board games and just uh, glue it on uh, the other side of the stamp I'm looking for an example here we go here is uh, one of the stamps uh, that I just took uh, this uh, plastic soldier and glued on the back so now you've got a handle and if you don't have these uh, there are all kinds of fake uh, Lego parts and that you can attach in the back and all of uh, any kind of uh, stamp and make a handle so that's about the stamps. Let's now that's a, a sampling a, a stamp from craft, a pieces of craft foam. Now a, I've a, now I'm doing another kind of a stamp. I found out a craft foam that is thicker this is like uh, this is half a centimeter five millimeters thick and I've seen people in the videos and uh, hitting with the heat tool the craft foam and doing some embossing so I figured I can do something like that because I don't know how to carve and I don't want to carve into a, a hard materials to make my stamps so I just ordered a cheap uh, soldering uh, iron and I decided to try and use it to make a uh, carving into the, this craft foam so I'm going to demonstrate one of this uh, thing and let's see Another uh, tip I have, I wanted to do a circular stamp and uh, to, to do any kind of stamp, you, it's easier when you first uh, put down some kind of um, design of what you want to do. Now, because I wanted a circular a uh, Stamp. I took a glass of course it doesn't have to be a glass you can uh, take whatever a circle you want and I just did this from the ink pad and here we go I just have instantly I have a circle and now I'm just taking a permanent marker and I'm deciding what kind of a uh, design I want it can be something freehand like this or something that you are uh, you can use rulers if you want straight uh, uh, lines whatever you want you also you can take any uh, inspiration again Pinterest and all over the internet now here is the uh, soldering iron and it's already hot work with it with a window open the fumes are horrible so very gently I'm I'm not uh, yet so uh, great with it 
it takes time to <laughs> learn how to work it and you decide what you uh, want to remove do you want this to print or do you want the lines if you want the lines then you have more work of removing the rest so if I don't want this to print I will need to go all over this and remove and again here if I only want these petals to print then I need to uh, burn I don't know <laughs> melt uh, all the things that are beside the petals that I drew like this now I don't I don't have any uh, kind of uh, recommendations about the soldering iron I just went into Aliexpress and found the cheapest one I could find it was like something like uh, four uh, American dollars and I also ordered there are several uh, heads that you can put on uh, with the different uh, sizes and shapes that you can put uh, on top and change so I've ordered this all also I haven't gotten it uh, yet we'll see when it comes what I can do with it so here it is here is my stamp I'm just going a little bit more over here and moving this aside be very careful it's hot if you are uh, going to attempt something like that again taking the nail scissors and going in it's a little bit difficult but can be managed just for now I know I've seen lately a video there and there is a, something that called mold, moldable foam or something like that that you can also heat and print on it but I don't have access to it and it's probably <laughs> a, costs a lot so it's not something that I'm uh, going to look for and just so you will see what I've been what we've been doing with this I'm putting it on the ink pad uh, the first time you are uh, trying to print it uh, you really need to coat it very good only for the first print okay here we go and as you can see I haven't gone over the edges quite so well I can uh, take the soldering iron again and go over them but here we go handmade stamp so these were uh, the stamps and what else of course uh, you can also make prints with lots of different stuff that you can find at home and all the silicone stuff that you can buy uh, in cheap stores or at Rivet and coasters are great to make uh, prints so uh, what else do I need to tell you <laughs> about the stamps we covered the sprays we covered the uh, stencils and this oh now for a our journal and how I assemble it I've learned through time that I like working on pages that are not attached to the art journal I will take a page I will work on it put it aside until I've got a stack of them and then I'll bind them together I made um, I made a video and it's called about uh, there are two videos one is how to uh, 
bind loose leaf pages and basically just so uh, you'll know I'm taking to bind loose uh, leaf pages I will take a boring uh, scrapbook paper that I have or ugly one take a strip up out of it if it's the like, strip and fold it and I will have a hinge and I will take one one a page like this and uh, glue it down another page let's see here we go another page glue it down and then I have this double spread that after that I will attach back to back I will have another one like this and they will be attached back to back which is the next the other video that I made how to attach the double spreads back to back like when I'm working on uh, this double spread again I uh, prefer not to work on it when it's attached to something I prefer to work on my page like this I will fold it put it aside and when I've got a stack of them I will just glue them back to back here this and this will be glued together until I have got a nice art journal and then I'm only then I will do a cover so this is about how I'm working all my uh, I'm working almost always on watercolor paper it's easier for me it's thick enough it's durable enough uh, especially that I use a lot of wet media uh, like uh, a lot of uh, white glue I only use white uh, glue and silicone glue white glue the cheapest I find in the cheap store sometimes I'll dilute it a little bit with water I don't have measurements it's just something uh, that I, how I like the consistency and so that's how I'm doing my art journals and I've got everything is already on a uh, video just check it out in my channel now uh, something quite weird happened uh, in the in last week uh, I've got a lot more subscribers and it's great but I just don't know how that came to be if you have a minute please leave me a comment below and say how you stumbled upon my channel it's great thank you for being here but I would love to know if I need to thank someone for the shout out uh, if you came uh, through a recommendation from someone so it would be very nice to know and this is it that's the reference <laughs> a video I've uh, told you I will make I hope it was uh, helpful and I hope I didn't forget uh, to tell you anything and you can always contact me on Facebook for any questions that you have of course you can also uh, ask me on the comments in the comments below so this is it for now thank you for watching thank you for leaving me comments and I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now